Hey guys, today we've got a Star Wars Xbox 360 that won't power on. It's got the red dot of death. Um, you could hear it as soon as I press the power button or the disc tray eject, the fans rev up, the red dot starts and it shuts itself down. It doesn't even eject the disc tray all the way. Um, the most common issue for this is the temperature sensors on the motherboard are no longer working. Um, there's a couple, there's like six resistors on the board that we'll take a look at and that's going to be our problem area and we'll dig into that here in a second. So here are the six resistors that we're going to be looking at on the motherboard. Um, here I'm just taking a multimeter and testing each of the resistors out. They're labeled R4D3 through R4D8. So these are zero ohm resistors, um, which means our multimeter readings for each resistor should show a near, a zero or near to zero reading. And if we get much higher than zero ones or twos, then we know that our resistor is probably the issue. So here I'm just kind of slowly going through each resistor and testing it out with the multimeter. All of them check out until I get to R4D5 and R4D6. Those two um, ended up being what the Xbox was freaking out about. Um, they had very high readings, not even close to zero, so we gotta fix that. So R4 D7 comes back good. R4 D8 also comes back good. This was kind of a bad test I did here. I'll um, once I have the board taken out. I run through the multimeter again and the readings are a little bit more stable. So here I'm removing the heatsink from the CPU. Uh, this is just so I can reapply thermal paste and kind of clean it up. Um, since we are having an overheating temperature issue, I figured it'd be a good idea to reapply thermal paste while we were in it. I am just using an alcohol swab here to clean off the old residual thermal paste off the CPU and the heatsink. <clears throat> so here I'm going to take a reading of the resistors again. R4D3 checks out, R4D4 looking really good, R4D5 still struggling to get a reading on that, R4D6, R4D7 is good and R4D8 is good. So still have an issue with R4D5 and R4D6. Here I'm just spot checking them again on my way back down.
All right, so I think I know where the problem is. Um, at this point, while I have the board disassembled and everything out, I'm just gonna give it a quick clean with some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. Really, this board was in pretty good shape. It wasn't very dirty at all. I think the fan was probably the dirtiest thing on the whole board. Um, but I'm just giving it a quick iso scrub down nonetheless. Alright, once that's done, I'm going to take a little bit of flux and just uh, apply it over the resistors. Um, I'm going to attempt to kind of repair the tracing and the connectors um, on those resistors. So I'm going to apply some flux right over the top of them and then I'm going to take out a heat gun and melt that flux down. So this is just a really cheap heat gun that I bought off of Amazon. It just has one setting, gets um, up to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Um, it gets really hot, so when you're hitting your motherboard with these heat gun type deals, um, make sure you're constantly moving. Um, you don't want that hot air to stay on one spot for too long, otherwise you're going to risk melting some components that you don't want. My goal here is just to melt the flux down um, over the resistors. Hopefully that kind of helps out the connectors a little bit and then just warm up the whole board to maybe reseed anything that might be a little bit janky. So after I let the board cool down, and the flux cool down. I just take a quick ISO swab and clean up any of the flux that might be left over on the board. I'm gonna uh, give another reading again just to see if the flux helped anything. So we got R4D3 is good. R4D4 is good. We hit R4D5 and it's still bad but we're actually getting a much more stable reading than we were before. R4D6, the flux actually appears to have fixed it. It went from about 20 ohms down to about the zero where we should be expecting it. And then D7 and D8 are also healthy. So now I just need to focus back on R4D5. So for that, um, there's a couple things you can do. Some YouTube videos suggest um, taking a solder gun and removing the resistor and doing a like sort of solder jumper. All I'm doing here is I'm just putting my heated up solder gun on the problem resistor and letting it heat up and melt the solder and my goal here is to just try and restabilize that connection on the solder or on the resistor to the motherboard without having to actually remove it and do the solder jump. So after that I hit it with the multimeter again and things appear to be a lot better. Um, R4D5 is showing close to zero ohms which is what we're looking for. And here I'm just hitting all the resistors again and you can see each one comes back with a near zero reading. And we're looking like we're in good shape. So at this point I'm just gonna apply some fresh uh, thermal paste back on the CPU and uh, reassemble everything and put it back together and see see if she runs. And here I didn't want to wait to assemble the whole thing just in case I had to take it all apart again. So I hooked up the ribbon cable to the power button and wanted to power it on just to see if um, it would reset itself. And sure enough, we got a stable blue light. 
things are looking healthy, disk drives working. So the fix was just the R R4, D5, and R4, D6 resistors on the motherboard were not set properly. They came loose. Not sure what happened, but adding a little bit of flux, reheating things, and just touching the bad resistors with a solder gun to kind of melt the solder again seems to have fixed it. We got a successful boot up. Good Xbox 360 screen. And... That is a recovered and fixed limited edition Star Wars Xbox 360, revived from the Red Dot of Death. Um, here I'm just putting in a game to confirm functionality, but that's pretty much the end of the video. I hope um, this helps somebody out there repair their Xbox.